When you add a class to an element inside the new global styles area of generate blocks, you're going to see there are a lot of options here. Now I did a quick video just showing you the power of using classes inside generate blocks. I'll link to that down in the description below. But in this video, we're going to take a more advanced dive into this class system. The first thing you might want to be able to do is change the style of something on hover. So here with our container selected and our CTA wrapper global style, I'm going to click on the hover state. You can see this is appended our class with colon hover, which means we're now affecting what this style is once we hover over the element. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go to backgrounds here and we're going to change this to black. So now when I hover over this container, we should see the background change to black, which works perfectly. If we want to go back to editing our main class, we just click back in here to class. It's removed the colon hover, and now we're just styling this default background again. Now, even though you can only see main and hover here, there's actually a lot more to this. If we click on more, we can see a list of hover, hover and focus, links, and hovered links. So let's take a look at what links might do. We'll go ahead and underneath this headline, I'm just going to add a headline block, and we'll change this to a paragraph, and we'll make it a link. I'll go ahead and highlight this so we can see it, and click the pound button to give ourselves a link. Now, unfortunately, this CTA background is blue and the link is also blue, so we need to fix that. We could, of course, add a class to this link and style it, but we can actually take care of this from the container itself. We know if we're using the CTA wrapper with a blue background, we're obviously not going to want a blue link. So what we can do is click on this wrapper and either click links or click into more and click links. Now you can see we're styling the CTA wrapper space a, which means we're targeting any link inside the CTA wrapper. So here I'll go to typography, we'll go to text color, and we'll change that to white. So you can see our link inside the CTA wrapper has turned to white, but if we added a link outside of that CTA wrapper, I'll just add a default link in here, we can see that's still going to our default blue color that we set up inside of our theme. What we wrote here for this class actually only affects any links inside the CTA wrapper. This is really handy and you'll be able to take advantage of this in a lot of different scenarios. Of course, you'll probably also want to style the link when it's hovered, so you can click on hovered links and now we can style that. We'll go into typography and we'll change the color just to bright red just to see a demonstration. So now when we hover over this link, it's changing to bright red, but of course it's not doing that on any links outside of the CTA wrapper. Now these are the things you're probably going to be using most often, but it actually doesn't stop there. We can click this new button down here to reveal even more options. Here we can use compound selectors, which we'll come back to here in just a second, but we also have different categories here. We have hover, focus, and hover and focus, which we kind of already touched on. For our links, we have our links, hovered links, hovered and focus links, and visited links. And we also have pseudo elements, which are before and after elements. That's going to take a little bit more explaining to do, so we'll save that towards the end of the video. These badges here are really just helpers to be able to easily add the different classes to our selector. But we can do all that manually here through the selector input. In fact, I could put and colon hover. And it's going to go ahead and highlight this hover interaction because that's exactly what I'm targeting with this and hover. We're able to use these nested selectors right in here inside this input. Again, these are the things you're going to be using most often, but this actually opens up the door for nearly unlimited possibilities. Let me give you an example. Here we could say H2 and hit update. So what we've done now is we're targeting any H2 inside of the CTA wrapper. So I can go ahead in here and say for our font size, let's just do five rim. And we can see our H2 inside this CTA wrapper has gotten giant. It's now set to five rim. But of course this is an H2 as well, and it's not inherited those styles. That's because we're using this compound selector inside of our global styles. Here, when we click on the more button now, you can now see this main selector with all the nested selectors underneath it. Here we can see this dot next to the H2, which just indicates that we have applied some styles to this H2 inside of whatever the main selector is. If you're used to writing CSS, I bet a lot of light bulbs are going off right now because this is an extremely powerful system. Just the simple input gives us control over lots of different things. Of course, if you're new to this or not used to writing CSS by hand, this can definitely be overwhelming. But that's why I think these little badges are here. It makes it really easy to get to the most common elements. Of course, if you want to dig deeper, you can use this input field and be able to do some more advanced things. 
This also gives us the ability to toggle on the switch and do compound selectors so we can select CTA wrappers that also have an additional class. Now, before we wrap this up, let's go ahead and talk about our before and after pseudo elements. I won't be able to explain exactly how before and after pseudo elements work here in this demo, but I can show you how they work here inside Generate Blocks if you're already familiar with them. So we'll go ahead on the CTA wrapper and we'll target our before element and hit create. So you can see now we're actually targeting our CTA wrapper before. So now we're controlling this brand new pseudo element. So I'm gonna go in here and give it a size. Maybe we'll say 50 pixels height and 50 pixels width. We'll give it a background color of red. And we're gonna go down here to the position and we're gonna position it absolutely. Here we'll do it at the top left. Now the last thing you want to always make sure you include is something in the content field. So in here under content, we're just going to add two quote marks. And we can see once we did that, this pseudo element has showed up. Now of course we can style this any way we want with any of the controls here inside the editor and we can position this however we'd like. So maybe we want this to stick out of the top corner of the box. We can do negative 24 pixels and over the left we'll also again do negative 24 pixels. So now we are able to create a, an entire pseudo element right here from inside the Generate Blocks editor. Again, this really only scratches the surface of what you can do inside this new Generate Blocks Global Styles section. It honestly makes it one of the most powerful builders out on the market today. Now, if you're used to dealing with all these things either through other systems like Bricks or Oxygen, this is going to come pretty natural. However, if you're just starting out with learning all these different things about writing CSS and classes, it probably is a little bit overwhelming. Thankfully, Generate Blocks has already thought of that and created systems to allow you to continue working the way you worked before and be able to add these things to your tool belt as you progress through your knowledge. Hopefully you learned something new in this video today. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch all the new features I'm covering inside of Generate Blocks, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see you then.